Hello, everyone. This is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to episode four of When Guan Yu Joins Cao Cao. Last episode, we discussed Guan Yu's hurried departure from Cao Cao, and left off at Dongling Guan, where the general Kong Xiu has sealed off the mountain pass after his argument with Guan Yu reached the impasse. In today's episode, we'll talk about one of the more iconic moments in Guan Yu's legend, as he protects Liu Bei's wives on their journey back north. Towards Liu Bei, so let's jump back into our story where Kong Xiu had just sealed off the pass as Guan Yu has charged at him with blade in hand. Now, had Kong Xiu just sealed off the mountain pass and stayed inside the outpost, he probably would have succeeded in stalling Guan Yu. But unfortunately, Kong Xiu responded to a charging Guan Yu by charging out himself. Emboldened by his 500 men, Kong Xiu charged the Guan Yu head on while yelling, "Try to get through me!" Guan Yu simply waved back the caravan and charged by himself straight at Kong Xiu. As their horses crossed, one exchange of their weapons saw Kong Xiu thrown lifelessly off his mount as Guan Yu's green dragon crescent blade has found its target once again. Seeing their commander fall, the 500 men quickly lay down their arms and turn to run for their lives. But Guan Yu tells them that he has no intention to fight them. Instead. Guan Yu asked them to make sure to tell Cao Cao that he was forced to fight and kill Kong Xiu, and with that, Guan Yu leads his caravan past Dongling Guan and continues on their way north towards Luoyang. Now, Luoyang at the time was defended by Administrator Han Fu, and words of Guan Yu killing Kong Xiu had already reached him, so he gathers up his generals to make plans for stopping Guan Yu. General Meng Tan. Steps forth and says that since Guan Yu does not have the proper travel documents by law, we cannot simply let him through. Han Fu nods but expresses his concerns. Guan Yu has famously killed Yan Liang and Wen Chuo with ease, so how are we supposed to stop him? Meng Tan offers up a plan where he will personally challenge Guan Yu to a duel, then feign defeat to lure him toward the city gates, where we can simply shoot him off his horse with archers. Once he's dismounted, we can swarm him with regular troops, capture him, and return him to Xu Chang for a handsome reward. However, before they could debate farther about this plan, Guan Yu arrives, so they decide to just go with this plan. Han Fu equips himself with a bow and arrow and leads a thousand men to meet Guan Yu out of the gates of Luoyang. Han Fu asks Guan Yu to identify himself and state the purpose of his travel. Guan Yu replies, "I am Guan Yu, the Marquis of Han Shouting, and we are passing by on our way north to meet up with Liu Bei." Han Fu then asks if they have the proper travel documents. Guan Yu replies, "No." Han Fu then states, "Cao Cao has tasked me to defend this area and inspect travelers in case they are spies from the enemy. If you do not have the proper travel documents, then I have to assume you are a traitor who is a spy for Yuan Shao." Seeing that Han Fu isn't going to let them through, Guan Yu angrily retorts, "I have already killed Kong Xiu at Dongling Guan. If you do not want to suffer the same fate, then I would recommend you to rethink your position on this matter." Han Fu then signals to Meng Tan, and Meng Tan draws a pair of sabers or dao and charges forth at Guan Yu. Meng Tan fights for less than three exchanges and then starts to run back toward Han Fu according to their plan. But the red hair once again proves to be too fast, as Guan Yu easily catches up, and with one big swing of the green dragon crescent blade, Guan Yu slices Meng Tan in half. But just as Guan Yu kills Meng Tan, Han Fu lets loose the arrow, and it finds its target on Guan Yu's left arm. Guan Yu pulls out the arrow with his mouth, and as blood gushes forth from his left arm, Guan Yu charges towards Han Fu and his men before they could retreat back into the gates. Han Fu desperately tries to mount his horse as his man tries to stall Guan Yu, but Guan Yu cuts through Han Fu's city guards with ease and comes up to Han Fu before he could even get back on his horse. And with another quick swing of the blade, Guan Yu takes Han Fu's head and shoulder right off. Then Guan Yu charges forth to rout the remaining city guards and easily guide his caravan through Luoyang, where they turn east toward Sichui Guan. Now, speaking of Sichui Guan. There is some history here for Guan Yu. Sichui Guan was where Guan Yu first saw action against Dong Zhuo, 
when Hua Xiong defended the stronghold against the coalition army. Guan Yu made a name for himself that day by killing Hua Xiong in a duel so quickly that the hot wine poured for him by Cao Cao was still warm when he returned victoriously. However, nowadays the pass is guarded by a general named Bian Xi, who used to be a yellow turban general before surrendering to Cao Cao and is famed for using a morning star as a weapon. Knowing that he is no match for Guan Yu on the battlefield, Bian Xi plans to welcome Guan Yu at a Buddhist temple behind the pass where he has hidden 200 axemen. Bian Xi's plan is to sweet talk Guan Yu into a false sense of security and kill him finally at the banquet in this temple. So when Guan Yu arrives, Bian Xi rides out to meet him. Bian Xi sees Guan Yu and immediately start to compliment him on his battle prowess, his loyalty to Liu Bei, and his honor. Seeing that Bian Xi means no harm, Guan Yu tries to explain to him how he has been forced to fight and kill Kong Xiu and Han Fu. And Bian Xi nods and agrees and tells Guan Yu to not worry about it, as they deserve their death, and tells Guan Yu that he will personally report back to Cao Cao and plead on behalf for Guan Yu. So Bian Xi escorts Guan Yu and the caravan safely through Sishui Guan and arrives at the temple. Bian Xi says to Guan Yu, the journey ahead to the crossing to the north is still a long one, but before I leave you here, I have prepared a small banquet in your honor at this temple. Seeing no reason to refuse Bian Xi's hospitalities, Guan Yu accepts, and as they walk into the temple, they were greeted by the 30 monks who reside in the temple. One of the monks approaches Guan Yu and asks him if he recognizes him. Guan Yu shakes his head, and the monk tells him that they are from the same hometown and they had been neighbors during their childhood. Worried that this monk will tell Guan Yu of the trap inside, Bian Xi tries to shoo him away. But Guan Yu, who had been forced to flee his hometown at a young age because he had murdered a local bully, is eager to catch up with this monk. The monk, whose Buddhist moniker is Pu Jing, offers to present some tea for Guan Yu and Liu Bei's wives. And as they walked away towards the lady's carriage, Pu Jing quickly grabs Guan Yu and motions his arm like a blade to warn him of the danger inside. Now sensing the danger, Guan Yu and his guards return to Bian Xi and heads to the banquet, armed and ready for a fight. As Bian Xi sat down at the banquet, Guan Yu scans the room and spots the man hidden in the hallways. So Guan Yu asks Bian Xi if he means them any harm. Now knowing the plan has failed, Bian Xi yells out to his men, but before they could swarm the room, Guan Yu, with a short sword in hand, already dove towards Bian Xi. Bian Xi flees out of the room and runs to the courtyard where he has stashed his morning star. After a few exchanges, Guan Yu is having trouble dealing with the morning star's range with his short sword, so he tosses the sword away and grabs his green dragon crescent blade instead. Now with a familiar weapon in hand, Guan Yu easily blocks Bian Xi's swings and takes a big swipe with his own blade. Bian Xi was split in half from head to the groin. With Bian Xi now dead, Guan Yu fights his way back to his lady's carriage, which is now surrounded by Bian Xi's men. But as soon as they see Guan Yu approach with a bloody blade in hand, they flee in terror, and Guan Yu's small group once again regains control of the situation. Guan Yu gives out his thanks to Pu Jing and the group hastily takes their leave and heads for Xingyang. Xingyang is the last major city before the Yellow River crossing, and it is defended by Administrator Wang Zhi. Now, Wang Zhi is the in-laws with the late Administrator of Luoyang, Han Fu, who Guan Yu has just killed. So Wang Zhi eagerly wants revenge, but knowing that he stands no chance in the open fight against Guan Yu, Wang Zhi also lays a plan to trap Guan Yu. Like Bian Xi, Wang Zhi rides out to welcome Guan Yu and offers them the guest house to rest up for the night before they continue on their journey to the crossing. Seeing that Wang Zhi is going to let them through peacefully, Guan Yu agrees as their group is exhausted from their journey so far. That night, Wang Zhi summons his general Hu Ban and tells him that Guan Yu has not only betrayed Cao Cao by trying to join Liu Bei, but also have killed generals along the way. So it's justified that he must be killed. Wang Zhi commands Hu Ban to lead a thousand men 
to surround the guest house tonight and just burn the house down, leaving none inside alive. Now, for those of you with good memory, you might have remembered Hu Ban's name from before. When Guan Yu first left Xuchang, their group spent the first night at the house of a village elder named Hu Hua. If you remember, Hu Hua had requested Guan Yu to deliver a letter to his son Hu Ban, who is an officer serving in Xingyang. So, as Hu Ban prepares his men to set the fire, he becomes curious and wants to sneak a peek of the legendary Guan Yu before setting him ablaze. So Hu Ban sneaks into the guest house where he sees Guan Yu sitting by the candlelight, holding a book in his right hand and stroking his beard with his left. Staring at Guan Yu's long beard, Hu Ban unconsciously lets out an audible gasp. Guan Yu looks up and asks him to identify himself. Hu Ban shares his name, and Guan Yu, recalling the letter, asks him if he is the son of Hu Hua, who resides near Xuchang. Hu Ban affirms this, and Guan Yu hands him his father's letter. Grateful and ashamed, Hu Ban tells Guan Yu the truth of Wang Zhi's plot. Shocked, Guan Yu gathers his crew, and they rush out of the guest house. And with the help of Hu Ban, they're able to pass through the gate of Xingyang with no issues and rushes away towards the Yellow River crossing in the dark of the night. After sending Guan Yu on his way, Hu Ban returns to the guest house and orders his men to set fire to the empty house in order to not raise farther suspicion with Wang Zhi. But some of the gate guards have already informed Wang Zhi of Guan Yu's escape, so as Guan Yu's caravan made their escape in the night, they could see the light from the fire lighting up the night sky behind them. And just as they breathed a sigh of relief, Wang Zhi and a group of cavalry appeared behind them through this light. Guan Yu told his men to push forth with Guo Bei's wife as he charged back at Wang Zhi. As Guan Yu approaches, Wang Zhi thrusts his spear forth with all his might, but Guan Yu easily cowers to his saddle to avoid the thrust, and with a quick side swipe of his blade, Guan Yu cuts Wang Zhi in half by the waist. Guan Yu then kills off a few more riders to scare away the rest as they run away back to the city. Afterwards, Guan Yu rides back to the caravan, and they pushes on all night without rest. And by the next day, they had finally arrived at the crossing of the Yellow River near Dong. As they approach the crossing, which is guarded by Xia Hou Dun and his men, the administrator of Dong, Liu Ting, who Guan Yu had assisted by Ma against Yan Liang, approaches Guan Yu to warn him that Xia Hou Dun does not plan on letting them cross. Guan Yu argues that Cao Cao had promised him to allow him to return to Liu Bei, but Liu Ting tells him that Xia Hou Dun has placed General Qin Qi to guard the crossing, and that no boats are allowed to cross as they remained at war with Yuan Shao. Ignoring Liu Ting, Guan Yu pushes on, and as their caravan arrives at the crossing, Qin Qi rides out to meet him. A similar standard border control conversation occurs where Qin Qi asks Guan Yu to produce his papers, and when Guan Yu is unable to show them, Qin Qi tells Guan Yu that by law, he cannot let them pass. Once again, another general rides out against Guan Yu. And this time, it just took one exchange before Guan Yu cleanly takes off Qin Qi's head. Seeing their general has fallen, the regular foot shoulders lay down their arm and agree to ferry Guan Yu and his group across. Once across the river, Guan Yu is finally in Yuan Shao's territory, and after an arduous journey, through five passes, where Guan Yu was forced to kill six generals, they are finally safe and sound and on their way to reunite with Liu Bei. Or so they thought. As fate would has it, as soon as they land, a lone rider approaches them from the north. As he got closer, Guan Yu could make out the face of Sun Qian. If you remember, Sun Qian was the spy that Guan Yu had captured in Runan as he marched against the yellow turbans led by Gong Du. According to their plan then, Sun Qian was to make his way back to Yuan Shao with Gong Du and Liu Pi and find out how Yuan Shao felt about Guan Yu joining them. So now, as Sun Qian approaches Guan Yu, Sun Qian tells Guan Yu to turn back and hurry back across the Yellow River, as Liu Bei, Gong Du, and Liu Pi has been ostracized by Yuan Shao's own jealous northern commanders who have now placed the blame on their defeat on Liu Bei. So in order to prove their loyalty to Yuan Shao, Liu Bei had offered to take Gong Du and Liu Pi back with him to Runan, as they will try to start up another Yellow Turban Rebellion in the backside of Cao Cao's forces. Sun Qian says that he stayed behind at the crossing just to wait for Guan Yu to inform him, 
so that Guan Yu does not go to Yuan Shao by himself, where it's likely that he will be put to death. Hearing this, the group returns to the crossing and ferries themselves back to Cao Cao's side. And just as they plan to head south toward Runan, they see a cloud of dust approach their position. Vaguely through the dust, they could make out the word Xia Hou on one of the banners. It is clear that news of Qin Qi's death has gotten back to Xia Hou Dun, and now he has come for Guan Yu's head. To find out if Guan Yu's group can get through Xia Hou Dun and finally reunite with Liu Bei, come back next episode as we conclude our When Guan Yu Joins Cao Cao lore series. This concludes our episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't done so already, please consider showing your support for the channel by subscribing. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!